welcome to this uh, webinar about saving your business time and money, automating your data processes with Tableau. Um, my name is Andre and I'm a solutions engineer at the Information Lab. And today I'm being joined by my colleague, Phil. Um, Phil is an account manager at the Information Lab. Uh, the Information Lab is um, the longest standing Tableau Gold partner outside of the US. And, and we specialize in Tableau for our uh, visualization and automation. We use Alteryx for um, our ETL processes and AWS for all of our cloud services. Today's webinar is being recorded. You can ask questions uh, in the Q&A. We will have at the end of the session, we will have a, a Q&A as well. This session will take about 25 minutes to, to 30 minutes as well. And the webinar focuses and is all about how to automate and understand the data lineage using Tableau's data management add-on. What we will do is we'll run through the benefits of the Tableau platform and how easy it is to communicate about where data is sourced from, as well as how to keep the data up to date. We will also dive into how the pricing works around the data management add-on and how every license member can benefit from this added automation functionality. So um, a bit of a background to this uh, webinar session is that we have, um, and we've already done uh, quite a few of these, is every Tuesday in December, we have um, webinars around automation. And these are automation um, processes which you do with Tableau and Ultrix. Um, if you want to learn more about the events that we're hosting, um, then you can um, sign up on our Meetup page, which is called Let's Talk Data. It's an online um, community platform on which we have about 5,000 uh, very enthusiastic um, data professionals. And uh, next week, we also host a webinar about data science with Tableau and Ultrix. Um, that um, particular session will be at the same um, time as uh, today and will be next Tuesday. But more about that at the end of the session. So what we're going to focus on today is why data management? Why is there a need uh, for managing or actually um, yeah, creating some kind of data management platform? And what is data management Tableau? How does Tableau approach data management and how you can start using the data management add-on? Now, after we've walked through these three questions, um, I also have a bit of a discussion as well with Phil. Um, he has from an account manager perspective, some, some ideas about this and some questions. Um, and I'll give you a demo as well of how and, and, and actually how the data management um, functionality looks like, followed by a Q&A in which you can ask um, any questions around data management uh, and Tableau. Now, the first question was around why data management? Why, why is this uh, getting more and more important? Um, and also it's becoming a lot harder, like managing all the data comes from different places. Now, first of all, there is a huge amount of data out there. Um, every single day when we talk to our customers, we can see that the quantity of the data increases. And uh, closely related to that is that the speed of creating these data sources and, and data points is also rapidly increasing. In addition, we also see that the variety of data sources uh, almost explodes. So we see data coming from all kinds of uh, places and being generated really quickly. Now, because of these three elements, the, the quantity of the data, the speed of how quick the data is being created, and also the variety of the data sources, all of those make it really difficult to have one integrated data management solution. Now, I, I dubbed this as the new data normal, okay? We've heard about the new normal a lot, but in the data analytics space, data science space, we see lots of data being everywhere and the data is becoming more and more of an importance to companies. Now, 
we also see very complex setups that are very hard um, to kind of use as well. Um, we see lots of different tools trying to kind of merge things together. And one of the most important things that I see when I chat to um, customers is that there is this focus on one department. This one department does the whole data pipeline and data management side of things. And that's the IT team. Now, um, that is of course not something you wanna only rely on. Um, so having this one particular um, department looking after it would not be a good idea. And another problem arises then, and that is that if there is a higher demand for a quick turnaround, so there are so many users internally in a business that need answers really quickly. And if the focus is still on one department, that department might become um, a bit of a bottleneck. But these users, they need these insights and they need them a lot quicker. But can they find the data that they want? Once they found the data, can they then trust the data? So there's all of these kind of questions which we see come popping up because of the increase and, and the, um, the speed of where data is being generated. Now, what we see is that this will result in less trust. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lack of trust in kind of the analytics environment. The analytics environment will consist of lots of manual tasks. And because we have this, uh, one um, entity, the um, IT team, that there's one department, there's this single point of failure. And there's one thing you never want is a single point of failure. So all of this also leads to you not being able to scale. If there are lots of manual tasks, that would mean that there's no way you can scale out your analytics processes. So we have these kind of problems here, but what does Tableau do? Well, before we're gonna dive into what is included in the actual product in the Tableau data management add-on, I want to start with how Tableau, but also the information lab, how we approach data management. And we've had lots of conversations with our customers and we heard a wide variety of issues all of them similar to what I just described. And data is, as I said, increasing in volume and variety and also in importance. So Tableau and the Information Lab, we, we really think that um, by incorporating data management into the Tableau platform, users are then more able to, to access their data a lot faster and they can find it. So how Tableau and the data management add-on um, is, is being uh, approached is by a focus on analytics. Tableau as a platform is always analytics first. In addition to that, we saw that the problem could lie with, um, for example, um, IT being kind of that single point of failure. Now, managing your data is something that IT and the business should do together. That we don't say there needs to be a shift from IT to business, but no, they need to work together. Together, they can then tackle those data management problems. And if you have used the Tableau platform before, you also know that Tableau is big on visual analytics. Understanding what's going on in your flow is very important. So that's why Tableau focuses a lot on the visual analytics side of things. Um, and also the last point that Tableau focuses on is automation, especially because of that scaling element. So you can scale out once you can automate. Those are very closely related. Now, these are kind of the four key um, ideas about data management. We will talk about these um, in a bit um, more with, with Phil later on. But um, trust is, is mainly around uh, actually being, having the ability to see and control your data environment. Users can trust what they're actually using. Now you can also think about scalability. And I already mentioned automating your uh, work 
is a big one. So scaling out is to automation. We also have this thing called discoverability. And rather than what we traditionally do is like have domain experts and those domain experts will be appointed to, to certain maybe data sources or um, um, something in the data, users will now be able to search through the data assets that are on the Tableau server and will be um, and they will be able to find data a lot quicker. And Tableau has also made sure that there's lots of integrations. So it integrates with the full Tableau platform. So you'll see data management being done in desktop. You will see it in Tableau Prep Builder. And you will see it in the server and online products. So there's also lots of integrations in terms of, of APIs if you want to use those. So I've talked a lot about kind of the problem statement and how we approach and how Tableau approaches data management, but what is actually included in these um, products, in the data management product, sorry. And we get basically two products. We get the, prep, the Tableau prep conductor and the Tableau catalog, right? The prep conductor, um, in short, allows you to enable self-service data preparation at scale. Okay? Um, it means that Tableau Prep Conductor now also works on Tableau Server and Tableau Online. Um, Tableau Catalog, the one on the right-hand side of the screen, um, actually gives you a lot more visibility into the data assets that are on your Tableau environment. And these also include the prep flows. Now, these two together allow your organization to kind of ensure that the most accurate and up-to-date data is being used in the analysis. This is either viewing it in a simple dashboard or maybe doing some deeper analysis. So let's jump into these um, two components. So the Tableau Prep Conductor, I've uh, basically said automate, automate, and automate, focus on automation and scaling out. And um, in Tableau 2018.1, which is um, quite a long time ago now, Tableau introduced the Tableau Prep Builder, which is a um, desktop product, which allows you to do drag and drop data preparation. But very quickly, um, we started having conversation with customers and they all wanted to automate the prep flows that they built. So in Tableau prep, in Tableau 2019.1, uh, Tableau introduced the Tableau prep conductor. And the prep conductor makes it possible to automate and schedule your flows with the Tableau prep builder. And they do that in a scalable, reliable, and a secure environment. Now, with this kind of centralized data prep process, you know who is creating the flows, when they are running, and if they have been completed. So you get a few options when you have the prep conductor. You can publish a flow to the Tableau server. You can then also schedule this particular flow. And if there are lots of flows on the server, you, because it's integrated into the full Tableau ecosystem, you can also manage these flows. After that, you can also see if they've been running after a while, or maybe if there's error messages, you can monitor the health and the performance of these flows. All of this within Tableau and Tableau's kind of unique um, way of approaching things in a visual analytics way. Now, the catalog on the other hand is this one central place for finding Tableau content. So finding the right data is, is quite hard and especially when you do data analysis, right? And therefore Tableau has created the Tableau catalog, which allows you to see the relationships and the lineage between the different assets on your server. These can be, for example, the content itself, so say dashboards and sheets. They can be owners of content. And often what we say is like there's this 360 view of what's going on on your Tableau server. You can also start doing some trusted um, data sources. 
So what you'll get is that users can see where data is coming from. They can see um, what transformations have been done to the data. And all of that adds to the trusted element of the assets on the server. Now, if there is a problem with the data, you can set what they call quality warnings. And we'll look at that in the demo in a bit as well. But that will mean that you can set on a data source a quality warning, followed by um, if then any of the users are using this uh, data source in, for example, a dashboard, they will get that warning. Um, and that basically tells them, hey, there is something wrong with this particular data source. In addition, a very common use case that we see when people adopt the Tableau catalog is doing impact analysis. Impact analysis in this case means that imagine you're deleting or you're planning on deleting either a table or a fields from a data source. You can then see how that will impact the rest of uh, the assets that are on the server. And then you can make a, an educated decision if you actually want to do that. Now, this brings us to, we've now talked about the prep conductor and the Tableau catalog. How can you start using the Tableau data management? Now, for that, you need at least a Tableau server that is on 2019.1. And um, currently, I think today, we had 2020.4 actually being released. Um, so lots of our customers are already on one of these um, versions or Tableau Online has um, been able to use the data management add-on since 2019.3. Um, if you're on Tableau Online, you're being updated automatically anyway, so that's uh, not of your concern. For 2019.1 on server and later, what you typically get is uh, another license key, and you can add that to the actual server. So that's the first step, finding out which Tableau server or online version you're on. Step two um, is looking at the costs. Um, so the prep, uh, sorry, the data management add-on is uh, 550 per user in dollars per month. And this is for all of your users on Tableau server and online. So it's built for every single user that you have. Tableau and, and also us, the information lab, we really believe that data management is something that the whole company should be involved in. As you saw earlier, when I sketched this kind of new data normal that we see up here, is that um, there are lots of problems and they can only be solved together in a whole company. So that's why um, Tableau has chosen for this, um, this uh, payment model. Uh, the last step also not uh, unimportant is to contact uh, your either your Tableau account manager or your account manager at the information lab. Now, um, just to mix up this uh, webinar a little bit, um, what we decided to do is a um, little bit of a, a run through. Um, Phil is uh, gonna come on and uh, we're gonna have a little bit of discussion about how we see the Tableau catalog. So that second element of the data management add-on being used and, and being discussed. So let me see. Yeah, great. I, I think that's uh, really interesting to, to hear about those, those kind of new concepts that, uh, might be unfamiliar to some people. Um, and it, it just seems like it really is a, a nice evolution into, you know, the next stage of actually managing things a lot better. Um, one particular thing that really stuck out for me there was I, I remember um, pre, prior to being account manager, I was actually a consultant, but I was working with a company over in the US. And, you know, just for fun, um, it seemed like they wanted to change the data underlying all their dashboards every month. Um, and I remember it being a, a real panic for the week before month end when they just changed the underlying structure because you really had no clue about what the carnage was going to ensue. Um, as you can imagine, I, how do you think the, the kind of the data manager add-on would, would help that now um, as, as a kind of process where data does change, you know, the, the underlying structure of data, you're, you're buying your businesses, you're adding services, you're adding products. You know, yeah. those things can cause changes to the data. So what, what do you think the, the data management add-on could do to help that? Yeah, so that, that all comes into the trust element, right? So um, 
because if that happens once, your users will accept it. But if it happens more than once, they will start um, distrusting uh, your um, setup. So um, the data management add-on will allow you to do um, that impact analysis, right? So if new services are being added, you can see what is happening. Or if new things uh, or old things are being removed, you can see the impact in immediately through, through the lineage. Um, so that will definitely help. Um, you can also set up quality warning. So if something happens and goes wrong, you can set that quality warning and then all you use is that are actually looking at the content and using it will be able to see that. Yeah, that's great. And, and does it, like, how far down does it go? Does it go all the way down to the, the calculations? It, I, I saw it had the sheets there, but like at what level do you know how mm -hmm. things might, might change? Yeah, so it goes um, pretty deep. So um, the user will be able to discover all kinds of the assets that are on the server, including the calculated fields. You can see even the formulas that people have written. So a good use case that I've been working on with the customers is, is auditing the uh, formulas that people have been writing. Uh, and if they uh, follow some kind of, um, kind of um, a, a trusted way of creating those calculations, and then you can also trust that people have uh, done that. Often before the tablet data management add-on, I've worked with companies where they used uh, Microsoft Word and they send that document around for people to use the same calculation, um, which um, now can be prevented by using the data management add-on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that's made me think back to almost doing just as much work documenting things and documenting changes and, and uh, calculations uh, as opposed to actually doing the work itself. So that, that seems to be a, a big kind of time saver. Um, it seems to me that it, it would be also really, really useful for somebody that's maybe new to a business or new to a business area because, you know, how would they go about finding the data that they, they need to use? You know, they, they've got all these really exciting business questions. Where do they even start? Um, I mean, how, how do you think this would, would help with that? Yeah, so um, that's a very good question because Tableau uh, data management add-on integrates with the, the whole Tableau ecosystem. So um, you could take it even a bit broader and say like, hey, they've only have to learn how Tableau works and then yeah. prep conductor, the lineage, everything on server, all of those is in the same um, user interface and then in the same way Tableau approaches data analytics. So if you use the, um, the catalog, users can quickly see uh, where data is coming from. People can add descriptions to data sources. They can even see who the author is of the, the data source. And in addition, they can also, from within the Tableau server or online, send emails to those uh, authors. So there is this kind of quick way of, of informing them or, or asking them questions. Yeah, no, great. I think that'd be really useful for a lot of, a lot of customers. Mm -hmm. um, and it, here you've got scale written. It, it, scale kind of power, capacity. Like what, what do you mean by scale? Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. So scaling out your um, tablet deployment means that more people use it. But um, also, if you think about how the catalog, but also the prep conductor allows you to automate lots of your tasks. So that means you can assign people, rather than having to do their manual tasks of uploading files, doing manual cleaning, um, like yeah. doing all of those kind of mundane tasks, you can basically scale that out and you can say, hey, we've now automated this particular process. We're now gonna focus on doing analytics rather than on cleaning the data. So you can scale out your, your capabilities um, as a company in that way. Yeah, no, that, okay. that makes a lot of sense. Cool. Yeah, um, the, there's uh, kind of like the, the add-ons to, to platforms often are really difficult to kind of integrate or, or they're, they're a separate product itself. How, how is this kind of all, all um, integrated into to what, what Tableau does? Um, you know, how, how do you actually add it on, uh, I suppose? Uh, yes, yeah, so you can, um, if, you, if you're either starting out with Tableau or if you've already a Tableau deployment, then um, installing this is as much as adding a license key to your Tableau server or contact, contacting your account manager if you have Tableau online. What will happen is that uh, once you add a license key to your server, the Tableau catalog automatically kicks in 
starts indexing your um, your website or sorry your <laughs> server, and uh, once once it got it indexed, you can start using it, and it will do this continuously. So there's this one price to it, but then it will always work. So that means, and I'll go to the demo now, but what you'll see is that when I start uploading assets to the server, like a flow, data sources, or workbook, they're being automatically indexed. So there's no uh, real overhead for you. The only overhead is adding that license key to the server. Okay, okay. and then just one last one from, mm -hmm. from me, and, and it's kind of just a, a thought into the future, really. I mean, these seem like really useful additions to, to what's already quite a solid platform. Where we see this going, like what's, what's coming up in, in the next year um, from, from what you've heard? Um, what we've already seen today is that today Tableau released 20, uh, Tableau 2020.4, 20 which um, allows you to do your data preparation in the browser. So you will be able to do um, almost all of the functionality in Tableau Prep Builder in the browser, similar as what you do with Web Edit. So what we'll see is that there will be a lot more of a seamless experience between connecting to your data, preparing your data, analyzing your data, and then publishing. All of those will still stay in the same uh, platform, but it will be that whole pipeline. And I have a feeling that Tableau builds this uh, uh, pipeline out more and more. Excellent. Okay, cool. Um, thanks a lot for those questions. I'm just gonna jump into a quick demo showing you how uh, the prep um, builder works and, um, uh, sorry, and the prep conductor and also how the data lineage um, works. And then you can see also how this um, performs. So I am going into Tableau Prep. And uh, what we see here in Tableau Prep uh, Builder, I'm still using the desktop version. Um, and I'm connecting to a database which has uh, multiple tables. And these relate to book sales um, and, and books, sorry. So we have the, the book ID, the title, and the author ID. So uh, three fields, but we want to bring all of these tables together. So I brought in a table uh, which contains a lot more information about the books and the authors. So we can see that we get um, the genre in which a book is um, displayed, the actual comments as well. And uh, what we then have is we join these together. So we join them on the book ID, followed by the actual author which builds out this, this bigger data set. And imagine this is a data set that your data analysts will work with. So they can join these tables together. And what we then do is at the end, we have an output step. Now, I'm also going to bring in a table called award. And awards contains um, kind of the awards the different books and authors have won over time. So I'm going to join that with the um, main data set, but I'm creating two outputs. And you'll see in a bit why, why I'm doing that. So I'm gonna join that on title, and then I'm gonna add an output step. Um, in Tableau Prep Builder, we can now output to a published data source in Tableau Server or write back to a database table. I'm gonna choose the published data source, and I'm gonna call this um, uh, awards. There we go. And what we now want to do is um, a project as well. So we're going to put that in uh, the default project. There we go. So if I now hit run, what we should see is that it's now going to run and publish these uh, this, this content. So we can see the awards data source has been published. The other data source, if I hop into my content, we can see the books output as well. So we have awards and the books output. Books output is the full data set. It's gonna increase my screen a little bit. Uh, books output, and we have the, the awards itself. Now, if we click on, for example, this books output, and we now have in the data catalog, this lineage tab. And the lineage has on the right-hand side, the ability here we can see to see this full, what I said, 360 view of your data. So we see, we can see the database this data comes from, the actual tables that have been used to create the data source, the data source itself and the owner. So for example, I'm Andre, I'm the owner of this. 
However, in the lineage we, and I said it, it's continuously indexing. So what I want to do is I'm going to prep builder and I want to publish this flow. So the Tableau prep conductor can uh, schedule this. So I'm going to go to server and say publish flow. And I'm going to call this my books flow. Um, I don't want to add anything else and I'm going to put this in the default project. So the moment I hit publish, this is very similar if you're familiar with the um, uh, publishing of Tableau workbooks and dashboards, you can see that this is the same process. Now opens up in the same browser and we can see that this is new to those that don't use the, the, the data management add-on. We see an image of the actual uh, prep flow. So it gives your users um, almost like an audit of what's um, going on, on the, in the actual flow. Uh, we can fully annotate this. I, I didn't do that in every step, but you can if you want to. And we can either manually run this, and now we will use the server resources to, to run and, and actually execute this. Um, but we can also schedule this. And that's where the real power comes from the prep conductor. So if I click on create a new task, and what you'll see is that this is a, a similar interface as when you're scheduling, for example, your Tableau extracts. You can set these on the schedule. So you can say, hey, let's do every hour. I want this data to be refreshed. So imagine it's connecting to a data warehouse. Every hour, it will run that particular flow. We can then also decide which outputs. And this is why I created two outputs. So we have the full data set and we have the, the actual output from, um, so we have the books output and we have the awards output. And um, imagine if you're connecting to a database table, you could also do incremental refreshes rather than full refreshes each time. So this is a really big um, uh, use case is where you, for example, can set schedules for different parts of your flow as well. So you can say, imagine the awards is something that happens every month, but the full output happens every day. So you can then set different schedules for those. Now, let's hop back into the lineage because the conductor itself, this is all it's doing. It's giving me a nice successful status as well here. You can see succeeded. We can also see the run history. So we can see um, the rows generated, if there were any error messages. So you get that kind of that full um, picture. And um, there's also the duration of the flow itself. Um, all of this is um, being stored in Tableau's repository. So if you want to do any auditing on this, um, you have the same tools as what you have with the rest of the Tableau platform. So if I hop into the lineage and what I'll do is I have this books flow and what I want to do is uh, I go to the data source and I just want to create a really quick uh, dashboard. It will be a single sheet uh, dashboard. So in the browser, I'm going to click new workbook. This will open a uh, web edit session. And what I can do now is I can, for example, look at all of my authors. So they have a first name and they have a last name. And in this data set, I have the amount of hours they've been writing each single day. Now, it's not very interesting to look at the sum of those. I'm going to change that to an average. However, we can see it doesn't really look that good. So I'm going to create a calculated field in which I combine my first name and the last name. And I'm going to call this full name. And I'm going to drag in my first name. And the last name. There we go. So I'm what they call concatenating this and I make it one field. So I'm going to drag the full name into my view and remove the first name and the last name. And now it's easier to start analyzing this. And we can see that Robert in this case and Phoebe, they've been writing for 13 hours. So that's great. Let's add this to a dashboard and I'm going to call this my authors dashboard followed by saving this as my author's workbook. And I'm going to hit save. 
So I'm now fully doing this in the browser. Um, and if I now hop back into the, um, the lineage and I refresh the page, we will see who on over here that the right hand side that the lineage has um, grown. So we can now see not only the databases, the tables and the flows, but also the underlying assets here. So we can see the amount of workbooks, sheets and dashboards that use these data sources. So what that means is if I go to, for example, workbooks um, and the actual uh, workbooks, if I go to the workbook, what we'll see is that I now also have my full name here. So full name is a calculated field. If I click on it, we get a pop-up. And this is what Phil and I discussed earlier. We can see the formula. We can see which fields have been used and from which data sources. So you can do that auditing on this element. Now, the last thing that we could do, for example, on the data source itself is imagine there is a uh, problem here. We click on the data source and we find some kind of problem in this data source. We can then go and set a quality warning. So if we add a quality warning, we first of all need to enable it. We can set a warning type. Often, for example, because this data set comes from Microsoft Excel, so it will be stale data. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, data is stale, comes from static file. And I'm going to enable the high visibility. What that means is that anyone that starts using or looking at content that relates to this data source, they will be able to get this message. So I'm going to hit save. Once it's saved, we get this um, kind of indicator that there is something wrong with this data source. But that's not the only place where we see this. If we go to the actual um, workbook itself and I go to the dashboard, we now also get this high visibility error message. So important data quality warning, open the data details. And now if I start hovering over this and click on it, we can see that the data is stale, comes from a static file. So rather than having to email all of your users, you can add this in Tableau server. You can easily remove it as well, as easy as, as adding it. Um, and then you get that full overview. So this has been the pipeline from connecting to data, preparing your data, but then scheduling your preparation steps as well. And then looking at how the lineage can help you with setting quality warnings, finding out where content comes from as well. Excellent. Um, let's do a, a Q and A. Um, and uh, for that, I think we got Lorna as well, who might be um, taking a look and she's been uh, looking at the questions that have been coming in uh, throughout uh, this session. Hey, Andre. Yeah, sorry. Um, great session. Um, I love hearing more about the data management add-on and what companies can do with it. But there was one question. Um, there's a couple of questions, actually. Um, when is the best time for a company to start adopting the data management? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, uh, we recommend it to, to anyone, of course. Um, but we would recommend, if, you, if you're new to Tableau, to almost immediately start using the data management add-on, um, especially because um, this gives you almost an advantage because there's no content on your server yet. And the moment content arrives on your server, you can immediately leverage uh, all the functionality of the data management add-on and you can keep an eye on what's going on. For example, our information lab server has been running for uh, eight years or something has collected lots of content. We started adopting the data management add-on. For us, it was a lot more difficult to, to get uh, that up and running. But yeah, that's a great question. And also you mentioned like, obviously the data management is for the company, but who should own that? Should that be a Tableau admin or is there someone else that should really own this data management? Yeah, uh, another great question, because um, 
what we'll see is, and often I talk to customers about the, the pricing of this, is that we see that every single user has to um, be licensed for this. So if you start adopting this, it's for everyone. So some people in the company or in the organization will be involved with this a lot more than others. So Tableau server admin, for example, will have a lot more capabilities and will have a lot more responsibility as well. But at the end of the day, we, we think that um, managing your data should be something that everyone looks after. And also um, your viewers, even though they don't do anything on the Tableau server in terms of analyzing data, they just consume dashboards they are still in, um, interested in those data quality warnings. So we also think that, that basically for everyone, this is a good use. Perfect. And then final question, um, is it easy to install and use? Um, because sometimes IT in companies is a little bit hard to get past. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question as well. So um, yeah, we can, um, to add it to the server, you need to do uh, add a license key. So you need to have um, the ability to access Tableau services management, so TSM, if you're able to access that. So uh, that's typically a site or server admin, then they can enable uh, this. Uh, we also recommend to enable this um, over the weekend or whenever there is downtime, because there will, this, um, there will be this initial indexing of the content on the server but um, there is no uh, need for you to fully install um, uh, for the Tableau Prep Conductor. They do recommend having a separate node because if you run lots of uh, complex ETL processes, you could move that to a different node, but uh, for the data catalog that, that sits on the, on the same uh, processes. Perfect. Thank you, Andre. Um, there has been no other questions in the Q&A. So if anybody does have any other questions, now is the time to ask them. Um, but, but yeah, please let us know if you have any other questions. Um, Andre, anything else from you? Um, yeah, the only thing that I want to highlight is that we have another session coming up next week, Tuesday, December 20, uh, 22nd. Yeah around data science techniques in Tableau and Alteryx, uh, hosted by uh, my colleague, Chris Love, who's a Tableau Zen master and an Alteryx ace. So he knows a bit about, two pro about those two products, uh, which is gonna be at the same time. Um, so yeah, I would also recommend um, joining for that one. Joining that one. Um, I'm always really keen to, to learn more about data science. Perfect. Cool. Thank you, Andre. Thank you, Phil. It's been a great insight to the data management add-on. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, and that is all from us, I think. Um, any last words, Andre or Phil? Uh, thanks for joining. That was great. Thanks. Yep. Thanks a lot.